This week we're going to depart from the real world into a realm where image matters more than the actual quality of the car you're driving. Where the car becomes akin to an automotive phallic symbol. Yes, my brave little ones, we're delving into the world of the executive car. Our panel of wise men have placed Land Rover's Discovery in at number 10. Since the facelift, you can safely say it passes the leather test. You can also fit extra golf clubs by folding away the child seats in the boot. Now, when you read the manual for this thing, you'd be convinced that Land Rover are absolutely obsessed with acronyms. And uh, I've got my notes here, because I can't learn them all, far too many. We've got, well, this is just on the first page, ACE, SLS, ETC, HDC and EBD, which do all manner of things, but make it PDQ, they do not. Still far too slow for me. Most important of all is that you can literally look down your nose at the other cars in the company car park, because your raised profile allows you to check the join line of your colleagues' toupees. Now whether you're into cars or not, you hear the name Land Rover and you think of serious off-road vehicles. But having said that, in the 10 years since the Discovery was launched, the company have obviously put a lot of time and effort into making this feel a lot more car-like. And I'm really impressed just, just how stable it is on the corners. Even some of the fast bends, there's hardly any body roll. Yet there's even more to this luxury barge. You can traverse muddy fields to take your golf clubs to ever more remote places where you will not get the same disrespectful yawns at your interesting stories. Yet on the road it boasts an active anti-roll device which improves the drive to the office car park. Despite all of this, our expert panel has left the lofty landy in at a lowly number 10. High running costs, especially if you're on a long run, due to thirsty engines makes this a less practical motorway tool for the average exec. <laughs> Slipping in at number 9 is probably the most underrated of our executive car park fodder. The Omega has quietly notched up an impressive sales record by offering a more mainstream offering while rivals from the likes of Ford have fallen by the wayside. Vauxhall and General Motors have probably never had it so good because in the past five years their flagship Amiga has been consistently at the top of the executive car charts. The 3 litre V6 in the top spec model is a peach and the ride and handling compromise is a pleasant surprise, beating some more exalted offerings along the way. As with their VX220 model, the biggest problem with the Omega is that the badge is not going to get pulses racing. It does have a boot big enough to carry several golf bags and plenty of room in the cabin too. It's very spacious, it's extremely well built. It's a car that can take on the might of Mercedes, BMW and Audi. It's just a shame it's got the wrong badge on it.
Now for a little Gallic sophistication, the Peugeot 607 glides in at number 8. Still an unknown quantity in the office car park, the 607 has a lot to prove in order to make an impact. Peugeot have invested so heavily into technology for the 607 that they actually claim it's got more computer technology on board than an Airbus jet. Although the outgoing 605 was accused of looking duller than a conference speech, the 607 swings the other way with a nice blend of curves. There is an awful lot of room inside for the exec who likes to be driven in luxury and lots of gizmos to play with when they're bored. There's shed loads of boot space to hide the most boring golfer, as well as his set of clubs. Yet the 607 suffers from an even more acute badge problem than the Amiga. It's hard to persuade up-and-coming business types that a Peugeot can be as good as a Beamer. mentioned BMW? Well, it might wear a Brit badge, but our number seven has a lot of Bavarian input. It's the Rover 75. Say the word Rover, and what springs to mind is a faithful canine companion, one who always chases the postman, always fetches that stick and always turns up for dinner at the same time every day. It's what you call reliability. It has been a long time though since you could apply those levels of reliability to Rover the car. It's ironic. After the era of the Maestro and Montego are consigned to history and Rover finally produce a car worthy of the badge, BMW decide to get out. The 75 might drive like an aristocrat and enjoy a stylish interior, but it cannot cut the mustard in the barroom badge wars. Oh, I remember when Rover were famed for producing gentlemen's clubs on wheels. I've got to say that this is the best looking Rover for absolutely years. In fact, it looks a little similar to the new Jaguar S-Type. OK, it looks very similar, but that isn't necessarily a bad thing. But putting the S-Type aside, you can see there's more than a hint of the old Rover P60. That's the fantastic classic that Her Majesty the Queen likes to drive around in. Keeping the old order to one side, our number six is the Lexus GS300. Twenty years ago, we'd have all scoffed at the idea of an Oriental contender sneaking in to challenge the established European marks. Now we expect Lexus to come up with something a little special. The three-litre straight six and a cabin loaded with toys lead to the kind of refinement our golf-loving friends will enjoy. Although the looks fall short of elegant, especially from the rear three quarters. Flying in at number 5 with aeronautical precision is the Saab 95. 
With this executive cruiser, Saab have done what the Opel engineers failed to achieve by making the Vectra chassis handle reasonably well. Throw in a decent ride quality and the kind of build quality for which Saab are renowned and you have a very tempting package. The Swedes certainly know how to offer a quality, well put together package. The Saab is somewhat different from other executive cars. It's almost one out on its own. They also still have this great cockpit design which they push a lot in their television adverts. You can put a pilot in here, they say, and they wouldn't feel out of place. Probably the choice engine in the range is the 2.3-litre turbocharged four-cylinder. This smooth unit gives the punch of a bigger engine with better fuel economy. For me, Saab will always be associated with very natural people. The type that spend their Sunday afternoons putting their stuff into recycling bins, like vegans. Much as the Saab badge is admired, though, it tends to attract a more maverick exec who doesn't need to impress his peers. Not good for the golf club badge test, then. Hence, it lands at number five in our top ten. Join us in part two for our top four executive cars. Welcome back to the top ten executive cars. Our panel of experts have come up with their top ten, and we're rising into our top four contenders for the crown. Straight away we have a shock, as most people's choice for number one lands at a lowly number four. Inside you find sports seats that move electrically in every conceivable direction, guaranteeing you hours of driving comfort, no matter what your size, which is very important in a car that is as much fun to drive as this one. Generally regarded as the class benchmark by the motoring press, the 5 Series has all the badge cred you could ever want. Unless you want to stand out from the pack, for our favourite Beamer is actually a victim of its own success. How can you make a personal statement about your excellent taste and sense of style if every other rep is loading his golf clubs into exactly the same type of car? Yet you don't get to the top without getting something very right, and the 5 Series boasts a range of excellent engines allied to the best chassis around. But it's so good that it's dull. No, it's not. Is so. When you're cruising along in sixth gear, it strikes you just how quiet and refined the M5 really is. You get a comfortable, relaxing drive all the way. Get it out onto some open country roads and you see a very different side to its character. <laughs> But I'll give you this much, Ginny. It's not as dull as our number three. Falling faster than a ballet dancer wearing concrete slippers and filling our number three slot lands the Mercedes E-Class. There can be few badges with more allure than the three-pointed star, and it carries with it a reputation for unsurpassed build quality. And so does a set of drawers. But if you look at it long enough, you come to the conclusion that it's extremely boring. On the plus side, apart from the prestige of the badge, is that there are few things in life more reliable than a Mercedes. The E-Class continues this trend with an underlying sense of solidity. As though hewn from stone, which is appropriate because this Leviathan weighs more than a quarry truck. It is true that it's a less than involving drive, but to look for that would be missing the point somewhat. Swaggering in at number two is a more logical opponent for the BMW, the Audi A6. 
Despite weighing in at a very healthy 1,785 kilograms, it'll romp happily from 0 to 60 in a nadges over 7 seconds, which scares the devil out of many a GTI driver at the traffic lights. The posh arm of the VW Group have been refining and improving their products to be real contenders to the might of Mercedes and BMW, and this could well be the thinking man's number one. You get the hewn from solid granite build quality Mercedes drivers would look for. With more design flair and a more enjoyable driving experience. The benefit of optional four-wheel drive, an Audi speciality. But hold on a minute. The problem with all Audis is that they aren't quite... Quite what? Well, anything really. They don't quite offer the driving experience of your Beamer. Because if anything, they're so grippy and confidence inspiring that you don't feel exactly involved. Mm, I can see what you're saying. It's solid, but not quite a Mercedes. Exactly. But it is good enough to be number two. The interior is beautifully crafted and seems to be using only the best materials available. I don't just mean the leather, which is gorgeous, it's beautifully grained and feels lovely to the touch, but the plastics as well feel equally good to the touch and equally reassuringly expensive. It's a kind of rocket-propelled dream car of a travelling salesman, or the kind of car that turns up outside the school with the kids plastered up against the rear window. But Audi certainly don't let us loose with all of this power unfettered by technology. Oh no, heaven forfend. Well, before seeing what our number one is, let's run through the lot from ten to two. At 10, the Land Rover Discovery, a lofty option which is thirstier than the attendance of an AA meeting. In at number 9, the Omega, better than you might think, but without the right badge to impress your peers. Slotting into number 8 is the Peugeot 607. Like the Amiga, it's going to have to struggle to overcome badge prejudice and an early reputation for wagging its behind. Number 7 is the Rover 75, another underrated option for the executive with a friendly old world interior. Sweeping the old world aside is the GS300, pushing up our chart into number 6. 5 is the Saab 95, aeronautical heritage combined with smooth engines. Most people's number 1 is not good enough for our panel. The BMW 5 Series is our number 4, but what do they know? Staying steady at number three is the Mercedes E-Class. Confused between the solidity of the Mercedes and driving ability of the BMW, yet sensationally climbing to our number two slot is the impressive Audi A6. Which brings us to possibly our most controversial number one of the series. the Jaguar S-Type. The styling is a sensuous mixture of tradition and the latest modern trends, which only falls short at the rear. Despite sharing its underpinnings with an American cousin, the ride and handling are everything you'd expect of a Jaguar. Once you're on the move, despite the size of the car and despite its very comfortable Jaguar ride, it's very well controlled, behaves itself very well through the bends and is a genuine sporting drive. The biggest letdown is the interior, though, where the traditional wood and leather Jaguar is famed for makes way for a plasticky dashboard. But there's compensation under the bonnet in the higher spec models with the delightful Jaguar V8 engine. So how could our panel of wise men choose this compromised car over the near-perfect BMW, Audi and Mercedes? Well, because of the strongest pull of our criteria. 
All of our top 10 boast acres of leather, room for golf clubs, but the Jaguar has the evocative badge. And with a team in F1, that badge is gaining kudos at every turn. It's got the usual silky smooth Jaguar ride and probably every gizmo you could think of to keep you comfy and occupied. And probably one or two you wouldn't think of, including Trevor McDonald lodged in the glove box. Really, watch this. Climate control, temperature 24 degrees. Climate control, huh? temperature huh? 24.0 degrees. Thank you very much, Trevor. Actually, quite a lot of the stuff in here is voice activated, including the climate control, the CD player, even the telephone you can dial up with just your voice, which really, really impresses your friends. So our top ten ultimately came down to the most basic executive instinct, badge snobbery.